Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-karim. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Amma ba. Welcome to my second channel, Bibliophile Hermit. I want to talk to you today again. As something that I've been mentioning to you quite often is about a vegan vegetarian diet and a lot of the propaganda that the vegans and the futurists put out against meat consumption. And some shocking things I have noticed is some Muslims are rewriting the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to be a semi-vegetarian. And that by him being a quote-unquote semi-vegetarian, he was avoiding meat and saw meat as less than, which is obviously a clear lie. I found no evidence of this in the Sira, and he slaughtered animals, he ate meat, and he ate both meat and vegetables, okay? And obviously in the Quran, meat is permissible, and you cannot make something haram that Allah made halal. And veganism, vegetarianism, is something of the Buddhists. This is not something of Islam. And there is nothing wrong or inferior with eating meat. What's happening is the secular liberal atheists, they're making it posh, hip, and upper class to not consume meat to some. And this is something that has really struck, like, like st stroked my mind into really contemplating even deeper how it's a really sick agenda. And when I first came to California, I got around the vegan cult, and I was vegan for over a year, like two years. And one thing that I'll tell you is, when you get into that vegan cult, they make you feel superior to other people who eat meat. And they're hyper-emotional very mentally traumatized people and they show people bad butchers and bad farmers and some really horrible videos that are meant to shock you and frighten you and make you demonize and hate all farmers and their brainwashing worked on me for a little while because the videos they would select are some of the most brutal right but then as I started, you know, seeing no real results from having a sort of emaciated diet and having all that fake tofu mock meat food that was really hard on my digestion, caused irritable bowel syndrome, it was not exactly something I found beneficial to my health. And eating non-organic veggies and stuff that are sprayed in pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides they have less nutritional value than the organic ones and to buy organic veggies to supplement meat you know for each meal catches a pretty price spending about 300 a week and especially if you have a family and the body like my body didn't feel uh extra healthy it just kind of started craving cheese milk eggs steak, butter, right? And then I started learning about how the agricultural business has been taken over by big corporations and that that is the problem. When you eat a very healthy animal that was raised with few injections, was allowed to walk around in the natural way that they had about 60, 70 years ago, you can taste the quality in the meat. The, the flavor of the flesh is literally different than those who have been fed pellets, never allowed outside, right? Obviously that animal is, is still going to be better than just eating a bowl of peanuts, right? Or a bowl of spinach, but it's still beneficial to you. But if you can't afford better meat, then buy the better meat. But see, some people don't want to spend money on meat, but they'll spend money on phones, jewelry, material items. So they incentivize cheap meat in factory farming by not wanting to spend the money for good meat. 
And then the government and different political factions, they make it hard on good ranchers to be able to compete with the mega corporations that cut corners and brutalize animals. And some politicians have passed ad gag laws so you cannot film undercover what happens in the factory farms. So this causes a lot of problems for consumers because they don't know what they're getting. So good companies started labeling their products as humane certified, pasture raised, you know, good things like that. And it still wasn't good enough for the vegan mafia. They want cows extinct. They don't want you to have the ability to buy it. And when I started realizing the radicalness of these vegans, how they break into farms and steal animals, and they viciously hate people who eat animal products, they have a very warped mind. Hyperly warped mind. These vegans that I was part of wouldn't even consume insect products. So no honey. Can you believe it? Because they said it was inhumane the way the, the bees were sprayed with that smoke. And they didn't consent to have their money taken. So then I went on a more journey and saw how much more sugar is used in almond milk. And how much water is for almond trees. And then you're like, is that really a sustainable alternative? I tried hemp milk, oat milk, cashew milk. There was all these different kinds, which are fun if you want to mix it up. No one says you can't mix it up. But organic raw cow milk from a humane certified grass-fed farm tastes way better than almond milk, in my opinion. Same with the yogurts as well. And the natural way yogurts are made with less preservatives, the good brands that is, than the nut milk ones. And so I started just really waking up and then I became a butcher and I started appreciating good meat and I worked for a very good meat company. They didn't treat their employees well, but the meat itself was of the best quality. And when I got to eat a steak from there for the first time, I had never tasted meat that pure before. I had never seen a steak that good. I didn't even know it could exist. I didn't know what I was missing out my whole life. And I started to see the difference between corn-fed and grain-fed cows and then with these more natural holistic ways of raising cows and how the flavor of the meat without even salt and pepper is amazing and then eating the meat raw you know that was awesome and so when these vegans and vegetarians say humans are not meant to eat meat because they can't eat it raw it's like you know you can get an obsidian block like rock blade like the tribes used to do and harvest the animals that way i mean for thousands of years People have been eating meat. It fills up your belly, right? Way more than a bowl of beans, you know? Have both, right? And warriors are more sustained with meat than with eating like a rabbit. So my point is, is that I went on a whole journey of waking up to the lives of veganism, trying it out, and then recognizing how vegans have to heavily supplement, right? Not... And then they'll point out, well, there's fat meat eaters. True, but I'm talking about people who want to have a healthy, muscular body. They don't want to always just have supplements because they're lacking something because they're not eating good fish, good chicken, beef, deer. You know, there's so much good meat out there. And to deny yourself that because you're too lazy to buy a product from a good rancher you know, it doesn't make you more pure. And so then, I also looked about good ranchers utilize every part of the cow. The hooves are sold for dogs to chew on. The horns can be turned into cups. You can make them into handles for silverware. The hairs you can turn into brushes. The pelts, obviously leather, right? You can turn leather into a lot of stuff, you know? There's so much you get. Bones for bone broth. I mean, cook every organ you can. Eat the testicles. Everything. It's like Allah has given us so much to eat off of every animal. It's just you not being lazy and cooking every part. Not wasting anything. And putting your money into the best companies you can. And then 
spending money more on food than on clothes, right? So, when I hear this revisionist kind of woke vegan propaganda seeking into the Muslim community, where they think meat is bad and it's evil, and, you know, you're cruel if you eat an animal. I mean, these same people could drive past a homeless person. These same people, if they had a vegetable farm, would have to shoot vermin in order to keep the vermin from eating their crops, right? So... They would just shoot the animal and leave it outside to rot and hopefully an animal would pick it up. When a better farmer would shoot it and then eat it. <laughs> See? But they don't get it. And also, these tractors that grind up animals, you cut down trees, you know, there's no way to get around animal husbandry and occupation of space for crops and how it disrupts the natural forest system. So instead of listening to these people who want to kind of emaciate us, we just have to put our money into the good farms, right? So that whole spiel is going to lead me to what I think is a deeper topic, is that if you're elites, they don't want you eating meat. They don't want pregnant women eating meat. They want you eating fake cloned lab-grown meat. They don't want you having the right to hunt. They don't want you eating a nice juicy duck from your farm. They don't want you to be able to have chickens in your backyard that reproduce really quickly and give you a bunch of eggs and that you can just go outside and cull a chicken for your family or a nice fat juicy turkey. They want you dependent upon the grocery store and whatever corporate entity they have decided for your meat supply. This limits your freedom. And vegans are helping the government to take over the food supply because they're making starvation a high probability. Because if they keep making excuses for bird flu and swine flu and, oh, there's this, there's that, don't let the animals outside, little by little. Uh, even wasting disease, uh, hunters are doing really good at maintaining that. But still, the ability to hunt and farm for yourself is food security, is true liberty. And if you allow vegans and vegetarians to be hyper-emotional, unstable, mentally deranged people who can't fathom of you raising a chicken and then eating it and treating it well, well, you're going to have a problem. And these governments who are pushing the vegan-vegetarian diet upon their soldiers upon pregnant women, upon children are actually part of this sort of starvation death cult. They overly worship AI. They now want you to have grasshopper powder. They want to have mealworms. They want to have all these strange insect products to supplement you eating meat. And they make all these excuses about how there's no space for animal livestock. The earth is quite large quite large and there is space but they make it hard for entrepreneurs and for small farms and for people in certain counties to even have their own chickens so they reduce people's ability to supply their own food and start their own food supplies while telling you food is running out so you have to eat fake meat and become a vegan it's time for the Muslim community to see this strategy. If you don't have access to meat, and your government can shut down your job, they cannot let you go to work, they close down your schools, they tell you to stay inside, the grocery stores are barren, think about how they can oppress you. Think about how they can harm you. Think about how weak our men will be to defend us if they can't have meat. Now, if there's a supply chain crisis, and they can't get all their fake vitamins to supplement their meat, well, what are you going to do? You're going to have people getting weaker and weaker. And men who don't have a proper diet, they don't have good-looking bodies for their women, and the women become less sexually attracted to them. If you ever notice that these men who are vegans, that don't work out a lot, they have super skinny bodies, 
or they have like a fat skinny body which is like a pot belly and these weird flab like zero biceps and they're kind of like got a double chin going on they got man boobs from the estrogen and the tofu they don't really have attractive bodies no quadriceps no calves you know whereas if you notice some men who are really into working out you know they have meat they have a really well balanced diet now you will see some vegans who are cyclists and stuff but they have a lot of supplements that they take and if they're honest they'll tell you and sometimes they sneak and eat fish so they cheat on the vegan diet anyway therefore proving that you know 10 years of strict veganism and vegetarianism does a lot to your body and mind and your brain needs cholesterol and when I did the ketogenic diet I saw real results real results when I started eating raw butter not that fake margarine plant-based crap the feeling is completely different and I just want to just say that don't fall into this trap of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a hippie soft guru like Gandhi, you know, stuff for la, uh, who didn't want to eat meat and thought meat is inferior when meat is spoken about in the Quran. Hunting, that you can't hunt in, when you're in the state of ihram, right? But that alludes to the fact that hunting is permissible, okay? Even... Uh, Hamza was known as a lion hunter, okay? So he hunted lions. And pelts were traded in Arabia. Hunt The Arabs used to have these falcons that would help them hunt, and dogs, and they would hunt. Hunting is not haram in Islam. Neither is farming. Neither is meat, okay? So be careful... Of this sort of infiltration from within where the vegans get you to starve yourself because the vegan diet depends upon a functioning economy and if you destroy your meat and dairy supply when a war breaks out you will starve in mass because there will be no meat for you and if the vegans take away hunting grounds the animals will die off and then even if you can hunt you know if you don't have a license or it's illegal to hunt, they'll throw you in jail for trying to feed yourself. Okay? So you have to be careful with how much you let the vegans get away with. And the vegetarians. Because they're hyper-emotional people who cry over a duck being killed. Instead of a bunch of people starving to death because they don't have meat. They'll cry over someone shooting an elephant and the meat getting fed to the poor. But they walk past how many drug addicts every day in their real life and don't really feel much and do anything so you have to be very careful of their hyper emotional state of affairs and how they viciously hate ranchers and if you are somebody who processes the cows in a very cold kind of just like indifferent way right that's better than obviously abusing animal no one wants them to see an animal abuse but the vegans don't push for reform. They push for extermination. They don't push for the laws to become more accountable and for it to be more affordable for good ranchers. They don't promote the good ranchers at all. They put all the ranchers in the same basket. So be cautious and don't let the elites, the laptop soy boy class, starve you and make you think that eating meat is wrong because in times of famine a juicy steak hits your belly more than a bowl of kale or a bowl of cashews okay and you don't want your meat supply and your local ranchers who raise quality meat to not have any business so think about what i said and don't allow yourself to become physically weak Vegans in the city work, but not in the snow and not in other places. That lifestyle is a sort of elite privilege. And in other places where people are forced to be vegan and vegetarian, it's because they're destitute and poor. But they, that doesn't mean they don't want meat. It's a big difference. So think about what I said. And if you have a local rancher, support them, buy from them. 
try to buy from small meat companies, avoid Tyson and these other corporations who have some of the most gruesome factory farming out there, and start reading labels and making proper choices with how you spend your money, and the meat market can be changed, inshallah.